Okay, looking at this, um, we can see that people with pancreatitis have got a higher mean lipase concentration and a higher mean amylase concentration. So that's answer to question one. Uh, question two, uh, suitable units for lipase concentration. Uh, well, really, you want a mass divided by a volume, so something like grams per decimeters cubed. So decimeters cubed, decimeters cubed is a volume, uh, grams is a mass, so grams per decimeter. Or you could have uh, moles divided by volume, so for example, moles per decimeter cubed. There's lots we can analyse from uh, resource B. Um, there are five groups. How are they chosen? Uh, they should have been chosen randomly to avoid bias. So it doesn't tell you that in here. Um, other things to spot as we're going through. It doesn't tell us anywhere how many people are in each group, so we've got no idea of sample size. We don't know if it's representative or not. Um, We've got the two different uh, drugs here, X and Y, and we notice it's a saline solution each time. So the control is also uh, given exactly the same way, so it's injected, these are injected, and the saline solution as well. And then the only difference between the, the ones in the control is that these have got the two different drugs added as well. So the control allows us to prove whether the drugs have, have the effect or not. Looking at the graph, what can we uh, gather from the graph? Well, we can clearly see that uh, group 3 has got the highest mean. It's also got the, the largest spread around the mean, so the, the standard deviation bars are also the largest. It's got the largest spread around the mean, and it's the highest mean. That's actually the answer to, to, question, uh, to question 4. But what else can we spot from the graph? So you can also spot that if we're looking at drug X, there's an overlap between people with pancreatitis, so it's not a significant decrease. So overlap in standard deviation, it's not a significant decrease in people with pancreatitis, showing that the drug well, yeah, it, it, the drug isn't working on everybody. If we look at drug Y, we can see, if you look at there, look at here, yes, again, the mean is lower for both of these, but this is a significant drop for uh, drug Y compared to people with pancreatitis. So it looks like this does bring people, the vast majority of people, to have a lower mean amylase concentration. There is a significantly lower mean amylase concentration with, with drug Y. Neither of them, however, neither means are as low as the control group. Um, and if you look at the bottom here for uh, drug X, uh, it's not actually, the, the standard deviations don't overlap with the control, so it's not brought it back, the majority of people, into uh, as, as low as, uh, as the controls. So it's not brought it back to the healthy levels. So let's look at uh, question five. Why was saline solution used? So you're looking at tissue, we're looking at the, the pancreas tissue, um, we, and concentration is affected by how much water uh, would be in the tissue. So we don't want any sort of gain or loss of water of tissues by osmosis. So again, so that's why they use saline. So it's isotonic, so there's no gain or loss of water from the tissues by osmosis. So that's not going to damage the tissues of the volunteers. So there's no osmotic damage, there's no bursting or, or shrinking of the cells in the pancreas. Um, you do, yeah, obviously the people do not want to have their pancreases damaged. So there's no osmotic damage, no bursting or shriveling of cells in the pancreas. Question six, the percentage decrease. So for percentage decrease, it's drop, uh, or the decrease divided by the original times by 100. So we've got 790. We've got 490, giving us a difference of 300. Divided by what we're dropping from. So we're dropping from 790 times 100 gives us a 38% decrease. So let's look at the last question. Should drug X be used to treat, treat pancreatitis? Well, the only yes point is that the mean is lower than the, than, uh, the people with pancreatitis. So it is reducing, on average, uh, the symptoms. Lots of disagree points. Standard deviations overlap, so we don't know if there's a significant drop or significant, yeah, significant drop in uh, mean amylase concentration. There's no statistical test, no t-test to see if these differences are significant. Um, there's no information on the sample size. We don't know if it's representative. Um, we got no information if this was done over a long period of time. What time frame we're we talking about? We don't know if the treatment works for a, the, for a long period of time. Um, another drug that's been tested is actually more effective. Um, and this does have a significant decrease between the people with pancreatitis. So there's a significant decrease, a significant improvement for drug Y. So you should perhaps a different drug should be used instead. It's more effective. Um, there's no information that there's any side effects. 
So whenever you're doing a drug trial, if it's not mentioned in there, if the side effects are not, it could always be a disagree point. No information of any side effects for drug X. And also, there's no information about whether the level of pancreatitis to start off with was the same for each patient. You don't, it's not enough information to show if the results are comparable between each other. There are lots to say for that evaluation for question seven.